Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you for praying for myself and my family in Tower of Pentecost. And uh, I am thankful for the opportunity to serve God. Aren't you? Amen. I am thankful for the opportunity to serve God. I count it a high honor to stand again before you here tonight. And uh, it is such a great privilege to uh, be able to minister the word of the Lord and, and to be with such great people. I really do love God's people. And uh, I really am thankful for the presence of the Lord that we feel here today as a continuation of this morning. Wow, didn't God help us today? Amen. Aren't you thankful? Thankful for the deep presence of God and uh, thankful for His work. Genesis chapter 1, as you turn there, um, I would like to extend sincere thanks one more time to uh, the Dillon family uh, for their, for their uh, impeccable hosting of my family and I. Of course, my wife is with me here and our little girl, Rylan. And we're so glad to be here with you. Thank you for allowing me to bring my family with me. Uh, it's not every case that that's able to happen, but I prefer it. And uh, the Dillon family and, and this great church was so gracious in extending an invitation not only to me, but to my family as well to be here at uh, this great place. And I thank you sincerely from the bottom of my heart for that. So good to be with Sister Serena, she, she is such a sweet, a sweet minstrel of the Lord. And uh, the truth is, she's got stories on me. The greater truth is, I have stories on her. She ever starts t telling you anything about me, just give me a call. And we'll, we'll talk things over. I really do, uh, really do cherish our time that we spent together at Indiana Bible College. Her testimony, uh, it, it shattered the faithlessness of countless services when she would stand and say, I was diagnosed, but I was delivered. What a tremendous testimony. Amen. And uh, thankful. Thankful for that. So good to be uh, once again with the Dillon family and, and the Pritz, they're just awesome. I love these people. And the Folins, where are you? But there you are. The Folins, so good to get to know them and work with them. We just love every one of you. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Genesis chapter 1. It's good to be with Brother Cornwell. So good to be with him. And uh, who was it? Was it you, Bishop Dillon, that said, oh, by the way, Brother Cornwell is going to be here Sunday night, was that you? No pressure, right? No pressure. Thank you for that. Yeah, put the rookie up there. It's no big deal. Genesis chapter 1. Verse 27. So God created man in his own image. God created man in his image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and of the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God, in verse 7, 27 rather, it says, created man and woman in his image. Um, what I'm going to preach tonight, I will be honest with you, I had intentions to preach Saturday night, and when I spoke with Pastor Jason Dillon about this message, he requested that I preach it tonight. Um, I'm going to preach about being apostolic. And I'll make a promise to you. I won't preach anything that's not in the Bible. 
as long as you help me, I believe that revelation can come into this house tonight. I really do believe that. And uh, out of this text, I want to preach on this subject. Valor and virtue. All the men say valor. Valor. Come on, men. All the men say valor. Valor. Better. All the ladies say virtue. Virtue. Amen. Valor and virtue. Jesus, we love you and we thank you for your word that is in this room. Thank you for the presence of your spirit that has been manifested here. I pray, God, that you would pray that you would subdue the hearts and minds of every person here. Let no one approach this message tonight being defensive or or in opposition to your word. I pray that our spiritual receptors would be would be lit up, God, that we would not only hear the word, see the word, feel the word, But let us do the word, I pray, in Jesus' name. I'm asking you to help us, Jesus. Help us, Jesus, to do your word. In Jesus' name, I pray. Everybody say, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for standing for so long. God bless you. You may be seated. Valor and virtue. little subtitle. I want to talk to you about defending our identity. When you were born, the government assigned you with a number. Does anybody know what that number is? Social security number. Now, how many of you know your social security number? Very good. How many of you do not know your social security number? Notice there's a concentration of lack of knowledge right here in this thing. <clears throat> Put your hands down. How many of you don't even know what your social security number, you didn't even know you had one, right? God bless you. Innocences. Wow. Social security number. You know, um, my name is Jason, but uh, there's a few Jasons in the room. And uh, while my identity, in most cases, is associated with my name, When it comes to the government, they don't pay a lot of attention to my name. They pay a lot of attention to that number. Fact is, I can't get a checking account without a social security number. Got to have that identity, right? Um, If you're going to buy a home, you got to have that social security. It's it's identity, right? If you're going to get a credit card or if you're going to buy a car Join the army. All of these things, you, you've got to be able to verify your identity. We have a problem in our world uh, that we live in here in America, and that is with identity theft. It's a real issue. Uh, how many of you have ever had your identity stolen? Just show of hands, right? Okay. A uh, few, few, uh, few months ago, actually, my, my wife... Uh, was looking at one of our accounts, and all of a sudden she realized there's a bunch of charges for things that we didn't purchase. And little did we know our identity somewhere along the way had been stolen, and thousands of dollars literally had been racked up against our name. Thankfully, the uh, a carrier of the account had an insurance that covered that, and it didn't cost us anything. But it made us realize that that in our world today, there are thieves that are out to steal our identity because there's value there. A lot of value there. And um, so I come across some incredible statistics. 19 people are victims of identity theft every minute. Wow. Yeah. Identity theft is the fastest growing crime in America. Now, this is the incredible thing. Over half of the victims of identity theft are unaware of their losses, in many cases, until it's too late. It's crazy, right? It's crazy. Genesis chapter 1 is the keynote scripture of much of of what we believe. Unless 
you are willing to put your faith in the fact that in the beginning God None of the rest of the scriptures is going to make any sense to you. And, and tied up with that is this fact that God created us in his image. And then he put distinction in between the man and the woman. Thank God. <laughs> Oh, I could preach a lot right there, but I better just ease on. The, the truth is, here, here's what's incredible. Before your body was formed, scientists tell us that your identity is established at the moment of conception. Wow. In that instant of con- that is when somewhere in the DNA of that coming together, there is the establishment of the gender. It's amazing, really. Uh, it's amazing that, that God has in mind this beautiful balance of identity and distinguished difference between men and women. Uh, but, but before we, we go into that, let's, let's, let's settle this fact that I think God created us in his image because he wanted us to be able to associate with him. He he wanted us to be able to relate to him. God is not foreign when it comes to similarities between he and humanity. In fact, the very word that framed the worlds was made flesh And dwelt among us. And and we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the father. The word was made flesh. And the identity of God was revealed in the man Christ Jesus. I'm thankful that I don't serve a God that looks like a goat or looks like an alien or a Martian. I serve a God... I serve a God that feels the way I feel. He walked the way I walk. He spoke the way I speak. He sees the way. Now, isn't that incredible? You know why God did that? He wants you to be able to relate to him. Bottom line. But the problem that we're facing in our generation is that not only are people wanting to steal our identities for financial gain, the enemy of our soul is wanting to steal our identity for spiritual dominion. See, because whenever, here we go, whenever a man separates himself from the identity that God established in him, or whenever a woman separates herself from the identity that God established in her, he or she open themselves to be directed and influenced and in many cases even possessed by the spirit not of light but of darkness. Not of God but of Satan. And, and so what I want to come to do tonight is just kind of send a warning shot across the bow of every person's life in this room. It's not time for us to give up the fight for the distinction that God put into humanity in Genesis chapter 1. In fact, it's time for us to rise to our feet and say we still defend the identity that God established in the beginning. John 10 said that the, the thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Notice the progression. Satan has to steal your identity in order to kill your soul and destroy your life. Notice the progression. Before Satan can touch you, he's got to rob you of your association with God. 
Satan is out to steal the identity of my generation. And that's why I'm preaching this tonight. And I get a feeling that's why your pastor wanted me to talk to this, talk to you about this tonight. Because I know this is a youth revival and I'm preaching to the young people. But the truth is that every one of us in this room need to think about this. We, 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 can't just, we can't just bury our heads in the sand and ignore what's happening in our society. Ladies and gentlemen, there is a problem. There is a problem whenever a man that dresses like a woman is, is heralded as a hero and, and warriors come home that defend our liberty and get go unnoticed. There is a problem with that. You, you hear me for a minute. Before I go much further, let me deal with this. None of this is about hate. Every bit of this is about love. Every bit of, I, I love the fact that God created me in His image. And who am I? Who am I to say, no, God, you got the wrong idea about me. No, 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 no. He created me in his image and he put a distinction between me and the woman. And I thank God for it because this is God's plan. This is God's idea. And no man can tamper, touch, or dilute it without being spiritually defiled. So yeah, I'll rise and preach to you tonight. It's time not just for the young folks, but for the old folks and the middle-aged folks to defend our identity. Yeah. All the men say valor. Valor is a good old Hebrew word. Here's what valor means. It means strength. That's a good word, isn't it? All you men, put your arm up and flex your muscles. Now some of you, some... Some of you old men, the muscle done went to the bottom side of your arm. I don't know what's wrong with you. My, get your arm up and flex it. You got to kind of growl a little bit. Yeah, that's good. Now and then I shake a boy's hand. He just kind of puts a limp noodle out there. I said, bro, is your name Justin Bieber? Come on, you're going to have to help me out. Well, <laughs> I'm done off my notes. All you men say valor. You know what valor means? It means strength, ability. I worry about boys that can't swing a hammer. Am I Okay. I'm, I'm just going to preach. I worry about boys that ain't got no calluses on their hands. I'm just telling you, it, it makes me nervous. Because if you're going to be valiant, you've got to have some ability. Efficiency. Wealth. If you're going to have wealth, you're going to work. Worries me when boys don't want to work. Because I know that identity is being compromised and valor is not being transferred. Something in a young man's heart that drives him to get it done. Did you just say get her done? I didn't know I could say that here. Get her done. You know what else it means? It means army. That's what valor means. Strength. Ability, efficiency, wealth, force, army. That sounds good, doesn't it, man? Come on, all you can shout valor. valor. Valor, that's good. But you know, it's not a one-sided thing here. God has valor for the men, and he also has virtue for the ladies. All the ladies say virtue. Well, I think there were some men. I appreciate you helping me. I mean. All the ladies say virtue. You know what virtue means? 
strength, ability, efficiency, wealth, force, army. This word for valor is the same word for virtue. But depending on the context, that's how it's translated. Here's the point. The same identity connector that God has between he and men in valor, he has between he and women in virtue. Now, some of, you, some of you didn't catch that, so let me try that again. God does not look at one gender and suppose them to be higher than the other. I got proof for it. You know why? God created man, said it ain't good for him to be alone. Give me one of them ribs. I'm going to make him a help meet. God put into order the motion of relationship. Between a man and a woman. But here's the deal. If you're going to have a relationship with God and a relationship with each other as men and women, you're going to have to have some valor, men, and you're going to have to have some virtue, ladies. See, I'm going to this tonight because... Because we're dealing with issues in relationship in the church and, and in student groups in particular, there's a real problem that I see when, when, when young men don't treat young ladies valiantly. And, and when young ladies don't present themselves as virtuously. So we're going to deal with some stuff tonight. Is that okay? Let's just deal with a few things here for just a few moments. The, the first thing that, that I want to talk about in valiance is gender distinction. Deuteronomy 22 verse 5 says, The woman shall not wear that which pertains to a man, neither shall the man put on a woman's garment. For all that do are an abomination unto the Lord thy God. God's intention is that the distinction of our identity be revealed in the way that we dress. Sometimes I see these skinny jeans and I don't think valiance. I'm, I'm just... Bishop, I, I don't envision that the angel shows up and finds Gideon and says, Bro, those skinny jeans are rocking. You are a valiant. No. It, didn't, he, didn't the angel call him valiant? I think he did. Man of valor. Man of valor that, that's what it said. Right. See, if you want God to use you, young man. Well, let me just get down here where you are. If you want God to use you, young man, you're going to have to set yourself up to be used. That's right. I mean, I'm just, I'm just being honest with you. It's not time for you to water down who God created you to be. God needs strong, brave, courageous, valiant men. I'm going to take it a step. You see all these ladies clapping? They believe what I'm preaching. I'm going to take it a step further. Hollywood ought not establish your identity. You want to see how to dress? Talk, walk, treat a lady, look right here. Look around this room. You see these ladies clapping their hands? It's because they don't want a limp-wristed, weak man for a husband. They want somebody that can protect and serve and keep and sh- That is valiance. I, I worry. I worry when, when I see young ladies and they look more like Beyonce than they do their past life. That makes me really nervous. Because let me just help you. There, there's a spirit of darkness that is behind the musical element of this world. And you, you call me old fashioned if you want, I don't really care. There's a spirit of darkness between the Hollywood element of this world and. And there's a real issue when you model yourself after models and you miss modesty. 
Can I say that one more time? There's a real problem when you model yourself after models because you're missing modesty. You not. And I'm not. I preached on the guys first. Let me preach on the ladies a little bit. You ought not. Adorn yourself in a fashion trying to catch a boy's eye. You ought to adorn yourself in a fashion that is pleasing to your father. Don't cheapen yourself by putting in the window what's not for sale. Adorn yourself in modesty because you're out to preserve virtue. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just preaching what's in the Bible. I'm just preaching what's in the Bible. And, and this isn't something new. Your pastors have taught this and preached this to you. But, but I, I feel like God is trying to say, it's time to defend our identity. It's not only in apparel, but gender distinction in the scripture is outlined by the way that we wear our hair. 1 Corinthians 11, 14, and 15 doesn't not... Even nature itself teach you that if a man have long hair, it's a shame unto him. But if a woman has long hair, it's a glory to her. For her hair is given her for a covering. God's intention is that the distinction of our identity be revealed in the length of our hair. Valiant, short hair for the virtuous uncut hair for the women it's in the bible let's be honest if you were to be honest with yourself and me with myself we would know that someone's gender preference you understand what i'm saying the gender that attracted that they're attracted to is revealed in their hair let's be honest is that true someone's gender preference is revealed in the way that they fashion their hair it's not hard to see and i'm not coming at you mean hard or belligerent i'm just telling you that if you want to be connected To God, you've got to engage the identity that he created you to live in. Young person, don't come to your pastor saying heaven or hell issue. Come to your pastor saying, how can I be closer to God than I am now? And if you're going to be. Some of you say, well, it doesn't say uncut. You'll never know what long is, ma'am, unless you don't cut it. It's just in the Bible. I I, I don't know how else to say it. I thank God that I've got a wife and a daughter that have made up in force this down their throats they made up in their minds Ryland's making up in her mind this is virtuous I'm not out to look like a man I want to look like a lady this is virtuous I thank God that I live in a house with a woman and married to a lady that has power on her head because of the angels I can't believe that this is automatically connected to her identity and her virtue. I want to talk to you about sexual purity. Matthew 28 says, But I say unto you, that whosoever looks on a woman to lust after her has committed adultery with her already in his heart. If I could just elaborate on that and say this, pornography is not okay. There is nothing valiant and there is nothing virtuous about pornography, period. I don't care if it's softcore. I don't care if it's hardcore. I don't care if it's www or in your text inbox. It is a sin and it will defile your mind, your body, and your soul.
But I'm not just going to preach to the young people in this room about this because this isn't just a young person issue. There's not a person breathing in this room that's not dealing with this. I'll take it a step further. This isn't just a man issue. This is a woman issue. You know how I know? 40% plus of visitors to pornographic websites are women. You know why? Because a few years ago, men began to lose their virtue and be attracted to something that is completely unholy and unrighteous. And so women have thought, that's the only way I can garner the attention of a man. And so they portray themselves like those, like those abused and molested women in those films. Yeah, it's going to get a little tight in here tonight because I'm dealing with some spiritual problems. See, this, this trash isn't just showing up on the cell phones in the youth group. It's showing up in the bedrooms of the adults. And I'm telling you, you will lose everything unless you clear the trash out of your home. Let me just walk in the Holy Ghost here for a moment. I know this is a youth revival, but there's some parents in the room that need to start dealing with some stuff in your, in your life because the Spirit connected to all of this. And if it gets on your babies, it will wreck their perception of God-given identity. It will ruin them. Don't tamper with it. Don't play with it. Don't tolerate it. Don't think it's cute. Don't think it's unharmful. You can't look at another individual lusting at them and not be corrupted in your spirit. There's nothing valiant and there's nothing virtuous. First Corinthians 6, 16 and 18. What? Know ye not that he which is joined to an harlot is one body? Two, saith he, shall be one flesh. Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body. But he that committeth fornication sins against his own body. You know what that word fornication means? It means engaging in sexual intimacy prior or outside of the realms of marriage. It's not okay. It's not okay. I don't care what your health teacher at your high school says. It's not okay. I don't care. I don't care if you think a harmless hookup will not affect you. It's not okay. You will leave that experience forever damaged and torn. And you hear me. You hear me. There is nothing valiant and there is nothing virtuous about crawling into the back seat in a dark place and wrecking your life for the rest of your life. Why don't you preserve something God intended to only take place between a man and a woman that had committed their entire life together? young lady make up in your mind I'm going to wear a white dress on my wedding day for a reason it's because I preserved myself come on young man why don't you make up in your mind I'm going to stand before God and that company on that day having said I preserved myself for this moment and for this lady that's valiant that's virtuous First Corinthians 6, 9. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the, the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators. We talked about that. Idolaters, nor adulterers. Don't, don't get married and mess around. Am I okay? Don't get married and mess around. My God, you have the most incredible relationship on planet earth why would you cheat on it yeah I'm going to champion this for a minute you need to just make up in your mind I married this girl I'm going to love her till death do we part I'm going to give I'm going to love her like Christ loved the church I'm going to give her one thank you you husbands that are standing to your feet because I know there's some men in the room that have made up your mind to obtain the kingdom and I can't do that if I'm messing around (laughs) 
nor adulterers, nor effeminate. You know what that word effeminate means? Soft. Hear me. Hear me. If there's ever been an hour that we need men to be valiant, it's now. We need strong, brave, courageous, valiant men that will rise and say, I refuse to allow my gender to be wrecked by the agenda of Satan. I'm just trying to help you. There's got to be some strength in you that makes you realize I was created by God to be a protector, to be a warrior. Uh, Well, let me just give it to you. That word effeminate, look it up. Look it up in the scriptures. You'll find out that that word was referring to catamites. Catamites were young boys that were captured as children by invading warriors and armies. You've studied this. That go into, an arm, go into a place and capture them. And they would bring them in and keep them from doing anything physical. Keep them from doing anything manly. Keep them from building their muscular structure. Keep them from, from building up themselves into men. They robbed valiance from them. And those little boys were maintained to be soft so that the deviates of that oppressive army could use them for their pleasure. Now, it's coming to you tonight saying that there is a spiritual force that is coming into America that is out to rob our young men of their valiance. Don't think that it's cute and, and, ir- and, and, and unharmful or whatever that this agenda that you see of men softening themselves and becoming less like men and less and less value. No, no, no. There's a reason. There's a few deviates in the world that are saying if we can shape a generation of young men to be like we want, then we won't have to deal with any of, with any of this old-fashioned valiance, any of this old ideas of, of, of God's given identity. It's in the Bible. Nor abusers of themselves with mankind. Paul was talking about homosexuality. I love every person. And I'm doing my best to love them with the love of God. But it's in the book. I am doing the, every person in my generation a great disservice if I don't let them know that God did not intend for men to be intimate with men and women to be intimate with women. Amen. Everybody's got to know there's hope. Everybody's got to know there's a God-given identity. Every man's got to know there's valor available for him. Every woman's got to know there's virtue available for her. So I want to talk to you not just about distinction and purity, but I want to talk to you about rules of relationship. 2 Corinthians 6.14 Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For why? has righteousness with unrighteousness and what communion has light with darkness young man if you're going to look for a date you better be thinking about looking for a spouse because ain't no point in dating if you ain't getting ready to get married let me just help you with that well that went over like a lead duck Let me, let me help you one more time. Mom, Dad, if, if you would just hear me, I've been doing youth ministry for a little while, and it'd probably be better that your, that your young people waited to date until they were on up in their teen years. Because, because it's real easy to get confused about this whole thing. And, uh, and let me just tell you this. If, if you think it's cute or, or, or harmless for your, for your little girl to date the boy that's not in the church, you're missing it. In it. 
Sir, if, if, if you think it's cute or harmless for your son to date the little girl that's not in the church and, and not, not part of the kingdom of God, you're, you're missing it. I, and I'm just coming at you as, as sincere as I know how. The reason I am is because and scores of young men wreck their lives, their ministries, their entire existence because nobody stood up in their life and said, it's not valiant to yoke yourself with somebody that doesn't believe. I just want to tell you, I want you to understand, young man, young lady, they may look cute, he may be the quarterback of the best football team of the best high school in your county. But hear me, if he's not born again of water and the spirit, you have absolutely no business going on a date with him. She might be the cheerleader, the most beautiful homecoming queen in your county. But you hear me. If she's not born again of water and, and modeling virtue, you, you really don't have any business going on a date with her. Because what fellowship does light have with darkness? What communion? What communion does somebody who is born again of water and spirit have in an intimate with somebody who's not how are you going to maintain the same value system how are you going to preserve your 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 valiance sir how are you going to preserve your virtue ma'am just just help me understand why you would seek a relationship with someone who doesn't love god We deal with some dating relationships in the church. Some of you think that it's innocent and, and harmless for you to cheat and for you to go around and, and play your little dating game. So let me just fix that real quick. If he or she cheats while you're dating, they're going to cheat when you get married. Yeah, I'm going to say it. It's a lie. It's deceitful. It's a sin. Don't be like that. Be sincere. Pure. Let me just help you again, young man. You need to get to the end of your teenage years, to your wedding day, being able to say, I was a good man. I was a valiant man. I maintained, I maintained sincerity. I wasn't a liar. I didn't, I didn't go around double dealing. No, no, no. Get to the end, get to the end of your day, young lady. Get to your wedding day and say, I was sincere. I was pure. I was righteous. I was virtuous. Everybody say love. love. Yeah, I'm going to talk about love. Because love is very much a part of the identity that God put into humanity. I, uh, I've got a bad habit. I like cookies. Whole milk. Don't give me the 2%. Don't you dare give me the 1%. And if you give me some skim, all that is is white water. I mean, there ain't nothing else to it. And Brother Cornwell, I like it at the wrong about midnights when I really, boy, Oreo cookies, and you just made my point. But I'm going to ruin Oreo cookies for you. You ready? Throw it up there. Let me help you. The scripture says some things about love. And, and I, I want to list it for you real quick, okay? It's found in, in the book of 1 Corinthians. Charity, love, suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. It doesn't vaunt itself. 
It's not puffed up. It's not arrogant. Does not behave itself unseemly. It seeketh not her own. It's not easily provoked. Thinks no evil. Rejoices not in iniquity. Rejoices in the truth. Bears all things. Believes all things. Hopes all things. And endures all things. Put that picture back up there. Pride is not in that list. Pride is the complete opposite of the descriptors of love. Could, could some of you folks that have been married, let's just do this real quick. Have you been married more than 30 years? Will you lift your hand? That's incredible. More than 40 years? More than 40? Incredible. More, is there more than 50 years in the room? Incredible, right there. Right there. Right there. You know why? You know why, young people? It's because they love one another. They love one another when they're cute and young. And they love one another now that they're cute and old. Now, I'm not being disrespectful. Y'all as good looking as you can be. Just being honest. You know why they made it 50 years in a world where they say about 50% of marriages end in divorce? You know why? Because they love one another. And their love's not based on looks. Their love's not based, I'm going to use, I'm gonna use a big word here. Their love's not based on feelings. Because there's some days they don't feel like loving one another. She's back there going, yep. <laughs> Their love is based on a commitment that they made somewhere in front of God and men. And it's not about pride. It's not about arrogance. And it's not self-serving. They didn't get married for themselves. They got married for the other one. You see that man right there with his hand up? He married so that he could protect her. He's a man of valor. See that lady right back there? See her? You know why she married that man? She married so that she could serve him because she's a lady of virtue. You hear me in the Holy Ghost. Love ain't just what happens when the sparks fly and your lips touch. It's what happens when you wake up day after day after day with a commitment not to serve yourself but to serve your spouse. I wish somebody would celebrate that for a minute. I'm so thankful that God put love as a connector in between men and women that are willing to commit to each other in valor and virtue. And let me deal with marriage and I'll quit. Matthew 19 verse 4. Jesus answered and said unto them, Have you not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female? Some of you might have written off part of this message because you thought that's just the Old Testament. Here's Jesus saying, This is my idea. And said, For this cause shall a man leave father and mother and cleave to his wife, and they... Twain shall be one flesh. Wherefore, they are no more twain or two, but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let not man put asunder. They tied the knot. They came before God and men. And they said, it's me and her. She said, it's me and him. They didn't just make a willy-nilly, 
you know, as long as you stay cute. I'm just going to get real. You know, you know as, as long as you satisfy what I want. Now, it wasn't that. It, it wasn't, well, you know, as long as, as we never have too bad of a fight, as long as you never hurt my feelings. No, it wasn't that. See, they got together and they tied the knot. I still remember my vows, Brother Cornwell. In good times, in bad. In glad times, in sad. In the light that may lighten your ways. And in the dark that may darken your days. In sickness and in health. That's what I said on my wedding day. Nothing ever said as long as he don't get on your nerves. Thank God that wasn't in there. Nothing in there said, as long as she does everything you say. No, you see, because love doesn't serve itself. Love isn't self. No, 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 no. Valor and virtue, when it comes together, Jesus said it can't come apart. Is that what he said? Is that in the scripture? He said, one flesh. Two, coming together, being one flesh. Valor and virtue unite. And so some of the smart alecks in the crowd said, well, why did Moses then command to give a writing of divorcement to put her away? Jesus said unto them, Moses, because of the hardness of hearts, suffered you to put away your wives. But from the beginning it wasn't so. He said, the law is what brought divorcement because you were hard-hearted. But my idea from the beginning was that it be one man and one woman for life. That's marriage. That's God's idea. So let me just tell you. In defending your identity, in preserving valor, men, and virtue, ladies, your objective should be, you want to be married? To marry one man, ladies, one woman, men, and be with that person for the rest of your life. That should be the objective. I feel like I've been preaching long enough, but I want to share this real quick. I can remember sitting in a Sunday school class. And the Sunday school teacher was talking about some of these very things. And one of the girls in the room got real distraught. And she said, well, I just, I don't know if I agree with that. So the Sunday school teacher said, what are you talking about? She, she said, well, you know, I'm going to take care of myself. And so if, if we get a divorce afterward, then I'm sure and take care of myself. And the Sunday school said something to that little girl that challenged my life. She said, if divorce is even in your vocabulary, you have no business getting married. Yeah. Jesus admitted... It's there. It's because of hard hearts. That's why there's divorce. But don't go into a relationship between you and your wife with a hardened heart. Because love, it's not self-serving. It's not puffed up. It's not prideful. It's not arrogant. It is of God. So here's the challenge. Here's the challenge. Men, to be valiant. And ladies, to be virtuous. I want every young man between the ages of 12 and 18 to stand, come over here and stand in front of these blue handkerchiefs. And all of the ladies between the age of 12 and 18 to stand. Don't pick one up. Stand here. 
Right here. Just stand right there. You can turn around and face the me if, if that would be okay. I want all the congregation to stand, please. It's, it's been a distinct privilege and honor to preach to you this week. You men, look here. It's been a distinct honor to come to you and break the bread of life, to preach the word of the Lord to you. I've seen you worship and pray. The call of God is on many of you. I can see it. It's not hard. You've got an incredible future. But you will wreck your life if you don't commit to virtue. You will wreck your life if you don't commit to valor. You will miss your ministry if you don't make up in your mind. I'm going to be what God has called me to be and I'm going to live in his identity so here's what I'm asking I'm asking you to consider starting a movement with me that's the theme of this weekend isn't it let's ladies call it the valor and virtue movement maybe that when you take this little bandana Maybe you could put it on your key ring. The first time you have your keys to stick them in the ignition to go and pick up a girl to take her out, you would remember that this evening I'm going to be a man of valor. Maybe you could wrap it around the lanyard of your purse. Care school. Maybe put it on your backpack. Today, I'm going to be a lady of virtue. I'm going to live out God's identity. And when somebody asks you about it, say, just doing what the Word of God says. Just, I'm trying to preserve valor. I'm trying to maintain virtue. Because one of these days, the time will come when I'm going to tie the knot. And I don't want my valor or my virtue to be in shreds. I want it to be whole. I want it to be complete. I want it to be sanctified. I want it to be holy. Some of you who believe what I've preached tonight, I want you to come and lay your hands on these young ladies and these young men, and I want you to pray with them. Because the revelation of holiness and separation from the world is coming into this room right now. Young man, I want you to lift your hands right where you stand. Young lady, I want you to lift your hands right where you are. I'm asking you to talk to Jesus for just a moment right now. Lord, do the work, I pray in Jesus' name. Lord, do the work, I pray in Jesus' name. Jesus at the 